Welcome to the Marriage and Motherhood Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Perda. I'm a life and marriage coach for moms, wife, mom of three, and I'm also an Aries, and for my fellow human design nerds, a sacral manifesting generator. This podcast is for women who want to be happier in their marriage as they navigate their journey through motherhood, even if you're like me and you weren't shown how while growing up. Inside, we're going to be talking about breaking generational cycles when it comes to how to handle conflict in healthy ways, redefining motherhood your way, and prioritizing your well being because here we believe that women don't have to sacrifice their happiness to be a great mom. And a quick note to mamas listening with kids around you may want to pop your earbuds in because nothing is left unsaid on this show, which means there may be times where something I say isn't meant for little ears. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. This week, I want to talk to you about control. If you're anything like me, this is something that is an active thing to work on. And I want to talk about how your need for control may be sabotaging the partnership that you're actually trying to work towards because they do not go hand in hand. And it is really my growing awareness of where control shows up for me and when I feel the need to exert control that has really created a beautiful partnership with my husband today. I, I mean, I still work on this. Like I said, it's an active thing that I have to work on, but Being able to see when it comes out and in what situations has really led to less burnout for me, more support from my husband, and a stronger foundation for our partnership altogether. So I wanted to talk about this with you today in hopes that if you also experience this, that you walk away with knowing A, that this is totally normal, and B, maybe invite some curiosity to where it's okay to drop the need for control in some certain areas in your relationship, in how you raise your kids, and be able to stop sabotaging the creation of what you want, which is connection and partnership with your husband or partner. So here are some ways that control might show up in your marriage. Now, you may be taking on everything because it's quote unquote easier for you or you do it quote unquote better. Okay, like this is... (laughs) This is a big one for a lot of moms out there, especially when it comes to parenting or taking care of the house, Um, especially if your partner was not raised learning how to accomplish domestic tasks like, you know, cleaning the house, doing laundry, things like that. Uh, And maybe if you have more experience taking care of kids. Okay. Secondly, Here's another way control can show up in your marriage is when you're criticizing your partner. You're saying things that they're doing aren't good enough, or maybe you're nitpicking, or you're saying, oh, that's not the right way. Do it this way. All from good intentions, of course, right? But it still comes off as criticism, which isn't often well-received because they're out there helping and you're just judging what they're doing and how they're doing it. Okay. Third is having your life be overscheduled or, and, or you're rigid with your schedule. Okay. You've got all these things in place and veering off of that schedule, being more spontaneous doesn't sit right with you. Okay, so these are all ways that control may be showing up for you in your marriage that are really taking you farther away from the partnership that you're desiring with your spouse. Now, here are some signs. You are the sole decision maker of everything related to how life works in the home and in the family. 
you've become the sole manager of everything. Not a co-manager, but the sole manager, okay? You require perfectionism and criticize when it doesn't meet your standards. Third, you're unable or struggle to receive feedback or consider other people's opinions. And you end up either stonewalling, which means just completely shutting down the conversation, or you get defensive. And fourth, you may use guilt or pressure to motivate your spouse to do something. Okay, so those are four signs that you can look out for. Again, not coming from a place of judging yourself, but just awareness and invitation to get curious about, huh, I wonder why I do that, right? And, and thinking about how it would feel to be on the receiving end of that and, and asking yourself if you would like that, okay? Having a true partnership in your marriage actually requires shared power in the relationship, right? And it can, it can flip-flop, right? Like in some areas, one person can lead because they feel more comfortable leading in that area. And the other person feels comfortable following, uh, and vice versa. And sometimes it's shared where it's joint. Okay. Now this is a decision that you two make together. It's not that one person holds all the cards and decides how life works for their partner. Okay. Everyone has their unique experience and they get to have a say. So part of that is both people taking responsibility over themselves and how they show up in the relationship. For example, taking responsibility over your emotions, over your thoughts, over your actions and reactions, okay? And both people having a say in matters that are big, especially big decisions, and making sure that that is made jointly, not unilaterally, but together as partners. If you want a partnership, then you have to start treating each other as people with equal power and say in the dynamic of the relationship, okay? Another really key thing is that both people get to feel safe to express their emotions, what they like, what they dislike, and they feel open to be vulnerable, okay? This is where having healthy boundaries in your marriage comes into play. If one person doesn't feel safe to express it, then there is an imbalance in the relationship. And so being how, you know, you can only control yourself, it is up to you to do your part to make sure that both your voice and your partner's voice is heard and respected. Okay, now if that is not the case, then it's time to shift something, setting some boundaries in place, working on yourself, and being a stand for true authenticity, honesty, vulnerability, and safety in your relationship so that you can have that trust that needs to be in place for you to actually see each other as equal partners. Now, here are ways to release control. One is delegate. Delegate what you don't need to be doing, what your partner is capable of doing, okay? Your partner, whether they've demonstrated it or not, they're very capable human beings. And sometimes as moms, as women who have been conditioned to learn that there are pink jobs and blue jobs, and maybe we have more experience doing stuff, it's okay to delegate. Just like how we learn by doing and by watching other people, so can your partner, okay? And the biggest thing here is that if they're willing to do it, which I hope that they are, because otherwise, why are you with them? right? If they're willing to take on the load, 
and really show up as an equal partner in your marriage as a parent and as a fellow resident, whether you rent or own, then you have to, your job is to be clear with each other on who owns what tasks. And as the person with more experience at the time doing that task, since it's something that you're relinquishing, your biggest task is to step back and let them take it. Let them own the task, let them make the mistakes, let them learn what way works best for them. This is going to be quite the challenge for some of you because you only know your way of doing things, which you likely learned from your parents. And it's okay that they do it differently. Okay. The important part is, is to make sure that you two are on the same page of the final result, whether that is related to, you know, the, the tidiness of the home or cleanliness or what type of children or human beings you are raising. What values and morals do you want to instill in them? Making sure that that is in place, you can then step back and let them find their own way. Nobody likes a micromanager. I certainly don't. So if you are wanting to feel more supported in your partnership, delegating is a really, really big one and allowing for them to find their way, just like you would want to find your way in your own time, in your own unique way of approaching things and learning things. Okay. All you have to do is just be available as a resource if they want feedback, if they want advice. Okay. Secondly, another way to release control is to take responsibility for yourself. Just like how I mentioned earlier, right? Fully taking responsibility over your emotions, your, your choices, your actions, your reactions, your thoughts, and seeing how they play a part in how your partnership feels today, right? Are you making space for partnership to exist? Or is it a my way or the highway kind of dynamic, in which case that is not a partnership that does not create grounds for a equal partnership in your marriage. Third way to release control is practice listening to your partner as a friend. Remove any personal ties to what they're saying as you're listening, because it's so easy to be like, you're my partner. And so everything you say that you're unhappy about, or you can't do, or you're not willing to do has an impact on me. This is a great way to get them to shut down and not open up again. Okay. Their experience gets to be their experience. It doesn't mean that you need to internalize it as like the type of wife that you are or the type of mom that you are, or even a woman, right? Their experience is their experience. Just like how sometimes, you know, you really, really love your partner and sometimes you're really upset with them. They both get to exist. And so practicing listening as a friend is a really helpful way for you to help your partner feel heard without making it about you. That was probably one of my biggest lessons when it came to changing how I communicated in my relationships was the ability to remove any offensiveness that I may take on because of what they're saying. As a friend, if you are not with your partner, you would not really care about what they're saying. You would just be there just to be there for them. You'd be present to listening to what they're struggling with, and you would get curious about asking questions for clarity to help them, right? And when we're listening, we're not doing it for us. We're doing it for them. Now, in the meantime, you may be receiving feedback to help you formulate what you're going to do or say or feel next. But in that moment, 
the most, most important part is for them to feel hurt. So if you want to feel hurt in your partnership, start practicing by helping them feel hurt. Then you can model what it's like to be heard and you can ask for specific requests for them to follow so that you too feel heard. Okay. That's a really, really big one. Here are some ways to feel empowered while you release control. Cause I know like releasing control can feel really scary at times because we feel the need for control to feel stable, to feel secure in our relationship, to not feel overwhelmed or just out of it. Right. And so we have to respect why we feel the need to exert control. Like, what are we doing that for? And go layers deep so that you can choose something different that still gives you that sense of security without sabotaging the potential for partnership. Okay. So here's number one. Exercise your power by consciously taking responsibility for yourself. Okay, there's a reminder. I'm not going to go into it again. <laughs> Getting on the same page with your vision for how you want life to be like and what you're working towards, right? Dropping that need for them to follow the same approach as long as the destination is the same, you're going to be okay. Sometimes that's going to look like giving them control over something and you just walking away so that you don't have to watch. Sometimes I like cannot stand watching my husband cook or prepare food. I just have to leave the room because I have to remind myself I'm grateful for his help. I'm grateful for his help. It doesn't need to be how I think it needs to be. I am grateful for his help. And I will literally leave the room because I just want to be in that space where I feel grateful instead of critical because at the end of the day, I'm not doing it. So I cannot complain. Okay. So as long as you're on the same page, take this dinner example, right? I mean, I rarely have them cooked. Just, that's just the way we are. But when he does help put food on the table, it's been very clear that it's important for us to have at least one thing that's nutritious and it's important for us to have at least one thing nutritious and we're not just eating junk food. Okay. Or if it's takeout, then not every single meal of the day is something that's unhealthy. We need a balance. So that's something that we've gotten on the same page about, and I don't really have to worry about anymore. So like if I have something to do for work or something, I'm working on a project or whatever, then he knows what our, our parameters are, and I can feel comfortable with what he's chosen. Another thing that's important to do to empower yourself is to feel like you have the permission to share what you want and need. Okay. And this permission, by the way, comes from you. So if you feel like you cannot express what you want and need, like you have trouble doing this, then really building up that sense of self-esteem and your internal concept of yourself. If you struggle with this, I want you to ask yourself, why are other people's needs more important than yours? What makes you different than other people? Why do you treat yourself less than or worse off than you treat other people? Okay. Because in a relationship, everyone's needs and wants matter. And when you're clear about what it is that you want and need, and you communicate that, that's where true partnership gets to exist because you can then come together to collaborate, to figure out how you both can be happy. And speaking of this kind of segues into the next one, creating safety and mutual respect by modeling it in how you interact with your partner, right? Allowing them to have a safe space to communicate their feelings, whether it, it is ideal to hear or difficult to hear and having that mutual respect for each other. Another one is becoming more autonomous, right? Not seeking others' approval to 
to dictate what you do, how you do it, and how you choose to be as a woman, wife, and mom, but rather letting your own sense of well-being be the sole deciding factor of what you choose to do and not do, what you are a stand for and what you do not tolerate, okay? Really living that aligned life, deciding from a place of how do I desire my life to be and letting that be enough instead of looking to other people and comparing your life making yourself feel like you're not good enough and that you have to subscribe to this specific way of living your life in order to feel good enough. Like that's a bunch of garbage. There are so many moms out there doing life in so many different ways. So just make sure that your way works for you. It could be a culmination of a lot of different ways that people are doing it. And you get to do this unique combination of of how they do it so that it feels good for you and your family. But please stop seeking approval from other people and weigh your approval of yourself more heavily. Okay, so less permission seeking and more aligning and more sharing, right? Aligning to what feels good to you and sharing with your partner what it is that you like and dislike so that you two can work together to create something that works for the two of you, okay? And last but not least, being more vulnerable, right? This takes a lot of courage. I used to really struggle with this. I would just feel so overwhelmed by my emotions and I would just not really know how to communicate how I felt. I just knew I didn't feel right. I felt mad or sad or lonely, but I didn't know why. And so having that courage to really take responsibility for what you feel and what you need, sharing your truth, this is what will decrease your desire to be defensive and blame or criticize or deflect. Okay, so doing that work, giving yourself that time out to really get clear on why you feel the way that you do, what's coming up for you, what beliefs you have that are having you react the way that you are, that is probably the most worthwhile work that you can do that'll really make a huge difference in how you experience partnership with your spouse. Because without that insight, it's really hard to actually grow together. Okay. Imagine being in a relationship with someone who's not self-aware. Okay. Don't be that person. Spend the time to get to know yourself because guess what? Closed mouths do not get fed. Right. And so if you don't take the time to figure it out, what foods you like or what it is that you need, you're not going to get it. Okay. You're leaving your partner to guess what it is that you need support with. And meanwhile, they're just doing their best. They're doing what they've learned to do in past relationships and even from their parents. So the more you're able to help them understand how to personalize your interactions together in a way that feels good for both of you, doing that is truly what will help you create that level of partnership that you desire, where both of you are really equal partners, where you trust each other to lead in specific areas or co-lead, okay? You deserve to have someone to do life with where you don't feel like you're doing it all by yourself. So question, If you're feeling like you don't have much of a partnership right now, question where you might be blocking yourself by doing any of those things that I mentioned earlier in this episode, right? Are you criticizing? Because if that's the case, then they're not going to want to keep hearing that. So they're going to stop doing it. And and if you think you can do it better, then they're just going to leave you to it so they can do something else where they feel good right? Nobody likes to feel like a failure. That's probably one of the worst feelings. So really challenging 
how you might be sabotaging your desires for partnership and deciding, okay, well, I do that and getting curious about why you're doing it so that you can have really open conversations with your partner so that you can start collaborating together. Okay. You deserve a partnership that feels supportive, that feels loving, that feels fun. Okay. And if you're struggling with this, take the time to journal about what comes up for you from this episode. All right. And of course, if you're wanting more support, I am taking on one-on-one clients right now. So reach out to learn more about that and see how I can support you. I do offer a complimentary clarity call where we can really dive into what is going on in your marriage so that we can figure out a game plan to help you have the marriage that you desire. All right. That's all I got for you this week. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your week and connect with me. If you are looking for support or if you just want to say hi, I'd love to learn what you loved about this podcast so far. And I hope to connect with you soon. Bye. If you like this podcast, then you'll want to join my private Facebook community, Marriage and Motherhood. The fights and the disconnect you're currently experiencing doesn't have to be how things go for the rest of your life. If you're ready to give your marriage a makeover, come join the Marriage and Motherhood community to learn how to create a healthy, happy, and connected marriage that you actually enjoy and your kids can look up to. Thank you so much for listening to the Marriage and Motherhood podcast. I hope that this episode helped you deepen your relationship with your husband and more importantly, with yourself. I hope to see you inside the Marriage and Motherhood community, and I look forward to supporting you in there. Otherwise, see you back here next week. Bye.